Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about uh, the conic sections and I'm going to talk about ellipses here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an equation and I'm going to graph that particular ellipse. So the definition of an ellipse is, it, we say an ellipse is a set of points in a plane, the sum of whose distances from two fixed points called the foci is a constant. So the idea is we have two points in the plane, the foci, I've got them labeled here as little f1 and f2. If you if you take any point on the graph, if you add the distance from the foci to the point, and if you take the distance from that point to the other foci, if you add it up, you'll get some number. And the idea is no matter it, what point you take, so maybe I take some different point and I do the same thing, I add up those distances from one foci to the other foci, I'm going to get the same value. Okay, so let's see here, the equation of an ellipse, one equation, so the ellipse x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. This is going to be kind of the standard form of, of an ellipse centered at 0, 0. In this case, let's just assume that our a number being squared is greater than or equal to our b value. We want both of those numbers to be bigger than 0. This is going to have a foci at plus or minus c comma 0. C squared is going to satisfy the relationship. Um, C squared will equal a squared minus b squared. It has vertices plus or minus a comma zero. And here would be a little sketch of the graph. So um, this looks more confusing than what it is. And definitely, I think after we graph a couple, it'll it'll make a little more sense. One thing I want to emphasize again is this ellipse is centered at the origin at zero zero. Okay, so. If you look at the number that's uh, the bigger number in the denominator, if you take the square root of that number, that's how far you move to the left of the center, and that's how far you move to the right of the center. Um, in this case, notice that if you the the line that goes through negative a zero and positive a zero, um, that's going to be a, a longer distance than the values between uh, negative b and positive b. We call this line that goes through the vertices, we call that the major axis. So in this case, the x-axis would happen to be the major axis. But let's just graph a couple because I think ultimately that's going to be the thing that most people need to do. So I'm going to do a couple here real quick. I'm going to take a couple that are already in a good standard form. Forgive my poor artistry here. Again, I'm doing this by hand. Um, so x squared over 9 plus y squared over 5 equals 1. Okay, so I already noticed this is kind of in this good form that we want. We want it to look like x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. Um, and we want the number on the right to equal 1, which it does. Okay, so in this case, and I want to emphasize again, we could actually write x squared as x minus 0 squared. And we could rewrite y squared as y minus 0 squared over 5. And when I get to my harder example, you'll see why I do this. Okay. One thing is, whatever number you have here, this is going to be the center of your ellipse. So our ellipse is going to be centered at the point 0, 0. If you look at the number in the denominator, well, the 9 is certainly bigger than the 5. If you take the square root of 9, well, the square root of 9 is going to equal 3. And what that tells me is, the way I think about the graph, since the bigger number is underneath the x part, I move along the x-axis that many units. So I'm going to go three units to the right, and I'm going to go three units to the left. But well, that's going to put me at the point, if I do that, the point on the left will be the point negative three, zero. And if I do that, if I, I travel out to the right, that'll be positive three, zero. Those are going to be the vertices of my ellipse. Likewise, if I take the square root of the number that's sitting beneath the y part, well, if you take the square root of 5, it's not really a nice number. You just get the square root of 5. So it says, from the center, I need to go up square root of 5 units. So I would be at positive 
um, 0 comma square root of 5. At the bottom, I would be at 0 comma negative square root of 5. And that's going to give me sort of the left, right, top, and bottom points of my ellipse. Um, this is not going to be very elliptical looking at all. Maybe I should make my points a little smaller here just to try to make it somewhat to scale. Again, I'm a bad artist. Okay, so basically we just need to play, kind of connect the dots and make it just oval shaped. Um, so that's going to be my cruddy little ellipse here. If we wanted to find the foci, we could use this formula that c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Well, in this case, we would get c squared equals, well, a squared, again, is the number um, just 9. b squared has value 5 in our problem. So it says in our case, c squared would equal 4, or c would equal 2. And again, the same idea. From the center, you go left. Um, we now take, um, we go left c units. So we'll be at negative 2, 0. That would be a foci. And then the other foci would be at positive 2, 0. OK, so let's do, I'm going to do actually a couple more of these. So try to make some more sense out of this. Again, I like to think about where the center is. And then I kind of go from that um, to help me get my other points. I go a certain distance, you know, horizontally and vertically to help me get my vertices and just the other points. So suppose we take um, x squared over 64 plus y squared over 100 equals 1. OK, so again, I could write this just like we had it before as x uh, you know, minus 0 squared and y minus 0 squared. Okay, so that means again my ellipse is going to be centered at the origin at 0, 0. And again, basically what I do is I look at the number on the bottom. So underneath the x, there's a 64. If I take the square root of that, I get 8. And that tells me again from the center, go 8 units to the left, go 8 units to the right. Your ellipse will go through those points. Likewise, if you look at the number underneath um, 100, or excuse me, underneath the y part, well, that's 100. If we take the square root of that, we get 10. And what it means is sort of along the y axis in the y direction, which to me always, I think about that as just meaning up and down, it says go up 10 units and go down 10 units. So let me give myself a little more room here. OK, so I'll put another dot there, down there at negative 10. So 0, comma, negative 10. This will be 8, comma, 0. Negative 8, comma, 0. And 0, comma, 10 up at the top. And again, this should be elliptical. It's almost, you know, it's going to look fairly circular just because the major axis. Oh, that's a terrible ellipse, isn't it? Um, pretty terrible. Um, the vertices in this case, again, now the vertices would be at 0, negative 10, and at 0, positive 10. And now our major axis, again, it's the longer, um, it's the longer line, so the major axis in this case would actually correspond to the y-axis. So that was x squared over 64 plus y squared over 100 equals 1. Okay, so again, I find the center. The, 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 I take the square root of the number in the denominator. Um, that tells me how far to go left and right from the center. I take the square root of the number underneath the y part. That tells me how, to fa how far to go up and down um, from the center. Again, if we wanted to find the foci, c squared, you always take the bigger number squared that's, um, and then the, the smaller number. So in this case, our c squared would equal 36, which means our c value equals 6. And it says, along the major axis, you go up 6 units. So that would put us at 0, 6. That would be one of our foci. And then at 0, negative 6, we would have another foci. 
So, all right, a couple examples here. I'm actually going to graph two more because I think these are a little time consuming. And then in another video, I'm going to talk about actually going from a graph back to an equation. So, feel free to post comments and questions. Hopefully, me or somebody else out there can point you in the right direction.